In this video, we are going to talk about GPUs and how does a GPU work. But at first, please take a second and subscribe to my channel. It will definitely help me for my future videos. GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit and it's just like a small PC. It has its own RAM and its own CPU. GPU is a specialized electronic circuit designed to rapidly manipulate and alter memory to accelerate the creation of images. This includes both 2D and 3D calculations, but GPUs primarily excel at rendering 3D graphics. It also has an input-output system as known as BIOS chip, which stores the card settings and performs diagnostics on the memory. GPUs are also computer chips that perform rapid mathematical calculations to render images and especially to calculate floating point, vector, and matrix operations. However, the advance of cryptocurrency mining made manufacturers to alter their design to suit miners. Equally, GPUs are equipped with a large amount of ALUs, which stands for Arithmetic Logic Units. These units are responsible for performing mathematical computations. The major difference between a CPU and the GPU is the quantity of cores. A CPU uses a few cores focused on the sequential serial processing. A GPU has a thousands of smaller cores made for multitasking. GPUs are used in embedded systems, mobile phones, personal computers, workstations, and game consoles. Some major companies in the GPU market include AMD and NVIDIA. In 3D graphics, everything is made from triangles. As you know, a triangle has three corners. Each corner of the triangle is defined using a X, Y, and Z coordinate, which is known as a vertex. Every vertex is need to be processed. The process means every vertex is need to be moved from one place to another place, and that is called translation. These vertexes may need to get bigger, smaller, or rotated. These three operations is called transformation. Since transformations involve decimal numbers, GPUs are designed to perform floating point operations. This specialized design enables GPUs to render graphics more efficiently than even the fastest CPUs. GPU renders images more quickly than a CPU due to its parallel processing architecture. This is what enables the GPU to carry out multiple calculations at the same time. Inside the GPU, there is a programmable execution unit called a shader core. Game designers can write code which runs on that core to process the vertexes however the programmer desires. After the vertex shader comes a process called rasterization which converts the vertexes in pixels. And finally those pixels are sent to the pixel shader to set their color. While GPUs excel at rendering graphics, the raw power of a GPU can also be used for other purposes. Many operating systems and software programs now support GPGPU, or General Purpose Computations on Graphics Processing Unit. Technologies like OpenCL and CUDA allows developers to utilize the GPU to assess the CPU in non-graphics computations. This can improve the overall performance of a computer or other electronic device. With the emergence of deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, the importance of GPUs has increased. In research done by Indigo, it was found that while training deep learning neural networks, GPUs can be 250 times faster than CPUs. In general, we have two types of GPUs, a dedicated GPU and an integrated GPU. First, the dedicated GPU. A dedicated graphics card is a piece of hardware used to manage the graphics performance of a computer. They are sometimes also called video cards or discrete graphics. There are lots of different types of graphics cards, but they all feature a GPU, a fan to keep it cool, and also come with their own memory in the form of VRAM, which stands for Video Random Access Memory. Most high-end desktop PCs will feature a dedicated graphics card which occupies one of the motherboard's PCI slots. These usually have their own dedicated memory allection built into the card which is reserved exclusively for graphical operations. When you watch a high-definition movie or play a graphic-heavy game, or some business applications that rely on powerful graphics chips like AutoCAD, dedicated GPUs will improve the overall performance but lowering the battery life. 
Up next, we have the integrated GPUs. Integrated graphics refers to a computer where the graphics processing unit is built onto the same die as the CPU. It is also called the combination of the CPU and the GPU. Integrated graphics used to have a bad reputation, but this has improved a lot in recent years. This kind of GPU isn't suitable for working with graphic intensive programs. And remember that you cannot play high-end games using this GPU. Another important note is that integrated graphics share memory with the main system memory. You'll sometimes see it described as share graphics for this reason. If your computer has 4 GB of RAM and 1 GB of shared graphics memory, you'd only have 3 GB of memory available for general computing tasks. Integrated graphics are perfect for people doing everyday graphics processing. This includes watching or editing videos, 2D gaming and general word processing. In the end, let's see the main attributes of these GPUs. A dedicated graphics card is for handling graphics intensive tasks, generates a lot of heat, uses more power and battery, has its own RAM, it's expensive, it's larger and easy to upgrade. While an integrated graphics card performs everyday tasks easily, has less heating, uses less battery, uses RAM on your device, it's cheaper, it's smaller, and it's not that easy to upgrade. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share your thoughts down below in the comment section. Stay tuned for my next videos. See you soon. Peace.